So in this video, we're going to talk about how to describe sets of numbers using inequality, interval, and set notation. So what we're going to be learning today is some new types of notation. In Algebra 1, you studied how to describe the domain and range of functions as inequalities. So in Algebra 2, we're going to be describing the domain and range of functions as intervals and sets in addition to describing them as inequalities. So we need to learn how to use these new types of notation. So we'll be talking about a lot of mathematical symbols in today's lesson, so make sure that you have this chart from your notes available to refer back to uh, when you need it. So now let's talk about interval notation. In interval notation, we're also going to be thinking about whether the endpoints are included or not. If we have a filled in circle, that means that the endpoint is included and we're going to represent that with square brackets. So for example, if this first number line was my domain, I would say that it goes like this. I would do square bracket at negative three because it's included. And then so I do negative three comma, and then I do four, and then I do another square bracket because that four is included. Notice that when we're using interval notation, we don't actually specify the variable that we're talking about. So if we have an open circle, that means the endpoint's not included, so we're gonna do that with open parentheses. Okay, so for this number line right here, we would write negative six, and then that goes to five, and then we do another open parentheses there. So notice that you can also have mixed intervals, right? Because if one endpoint is included and the other endpoint is not, we're gonna have a mixed interval. So like this example, I would do my square bracket with negative five, and then I would do my open parentheses with positive five. So once again, what about infinity? So just like with inequalities, we don't include infinity. So we're going to use an open parentheses, whether a negative infinity or positive infinity is our endpoint. So like if this was my domain, notice that it's going to negative infinity, right? So I do open parentheses, negative infinity, and then my four is an uh, included point. So I would do a square bracket with four. If this second number line was my domain, I would see that it's going to positive infinity. So I would do the open parentheses at three since it's an open circle. And then I would do positive infinity and then do another open parenthesis. Okay, so now let's learn about set builder notation. So another way to represent a set of numbers is using set builder notation. And what it is, it's like using a mathematical sentence, um, but except we're gonna abbreviate with the symbols that we talked about in our chart. So it's kind of like, you know, when you're texting someone and you text them BRB instead of writing out B right back, right? It's just an abbreviated form of a sentence. So the way we do is we use these curly brackets, okay? And these curly brackets are going to contain our mathematical sentence. So if we look at this number line right here, we would say that X is greater than 2, okay? So if we're going to write this in set builder notation, we say X. So this is just specifying what we're talking about. And then we write this line for such that. So what comes after the such that is going to be like the description of the x's that we're talking about. So in this case, we're talking about all the x's that are bigger than 2. So we would say x such that x is bigger than 2. So what set builder notation does is it gives us a different way of representing a situation where we have all real numbers, right? You can see in this number line right here, we're including all real numbers. So we would say that this is the set of all x such that, and then we do x, and then we use this symbol right here to represent element of, okay? And that is because a set of all real numbers is also a set of numbers. And so if we are looking at one member in the set, that means it's an element of a set, okay? So that's why we use this element symbol. So whenever we're talking about a situation where we have all real numbers, we say the set of all x, such that x is an element of the set of all real numbers. So what if we have a situation like this? So suppose this is like the domain of our function, right? So this is going to be all our x values. But notice that that domain is represented in two pieces, right? I have a piece going from negative 2 to negative infinity. And then I have another piece that's going from 5 to positive infinity. So how do we describe something like this? Well, if we're using intervals, we're going to need to use this union symbol to combine the two pieces. Because what this is telling me is that x can be from between negative infinity to negative 2, or it can go from 5 to positive infinity, okay? So the union symbol is used in interval notation to combine the two pieces. So if we're describing this in set builder notation, we would just use or, okay? We would say x such that x is less than or equal to negative 2, 
or x is greater than 5. So now let's practice. Let's try using inequality, interval, and set notation to describe different sets of numbers. So if I was going to describe this number line using inequality notation, I would say, well, let's see, it goes to negative infinity, right? So I would say negative infinity is less than x, which is less than or equal to 9. If I was going to describe this as an interval, I would do negative infinity, and then it goes to 9, and I would use my square bracket with 9 to show that it's included. So remember, in set builder notation, I'm going to write this with my curly bracket, and I'm going to say x such that x is less than or equal to 9. So now you can pause the video and try doing this example on your own. So notice that in this set of numbers, it starts at negative 1 and it goes to positive infinity, right? So if we were describing this as an inequality, we would say negative 1 is less than x, less than positive infinity. Um, in interval notation, we'd use an open parenthesis at both endpoints. And then in set builder notation, we would say all x such that x is greater than negative 1, right? Because this is including all the x values that are greater than negative 1. So now let's try describing this set of values. Well, notice that we start off at negative 5, so we would say negative 5, and then it's an open circle, so we say less than, and we're talking about x, and this 10 is included, right? Because we have a filled in circle at 10, so we're going to say less than or equal to 10. So these inequality signs are going to switch to, um, you know, open parentheses and square brackets when we go to interval notation. So we would use open parentheses at negative 5 because it's not included, and then we would do 10 and do a square bracket at 10. In set builder notation, we would say, uh, we would draw our curly bracket and we would say it's all x such that x is between negative 5 and 10. So we're just going to use that inequality to describe the condition of x. So now you can go ahead and pause the video and try describing the set of values using inequality, interval, and set notation on your own. So notice that this set of values goes from negative 1 to 8, and negative 1 is included, 8 is not included. So we would say negative 1 is less than or equal to x, less than 8. In interval notation, we would put a square bracket at negative 1 and an open parenthesis at 8. And in set builder notation, we would say it's all x such that x is between negative 1 and 8. So remember, when you're describing a set of values, you can use inequality, interval, or set builder notation. When you're using these different types of notation, it's very important to think about whether you're including the endpoints or not in your description.